Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I'm back for part two of our Ocean Warrior Design Lab. Uh, so judging from the comments, it looks like number five might be the winner, uh, but number two and six were also almost equal with number five. Uh, so I'm just going to combine elements from both, and you can see I did a little thumbnail on the side, just trying to see if I could combine elements. I did that off screen while I was reading comments and stuff. Um, I also played with some of the other thumbnails just to see if anything would work for a more blown up illustration. Uh, but after looking at them, I decided that I'd just go with this really basic uh, stance just so I could show off the uh, the concept of the character easier. Um, if you were going to do like a character concept sheet for, say, the purpose of actually establishing the character, you want to have a basic pose with the kind of legs and everything squared and out front. Uh, so I figured I'd just do that this time. I wasn't planning on doing it at first, but I think it'll work out. So I'm going to use the thumbnail I drew as a general guide for drawing my actual line art and a more finished design. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is just because it's easier to get the proportions uh, looking accurate if you work at a smaller size where you can focus on everything at once. Um, versus, say, trying to draw just the head and then trying to draw the body and everything. And if you're zoomed in, um, it's hard to keep uh, track of how big and small everything is. So sometimes your proportions will get thrown off and you'll find yourself having to adjust the size of things and do stuff like that. Uh, but just to keep it nice and quick, um, I did the thumbnail, blew it up, and then I can use that as a guide. And I know my proportions will uh, be okay, not perfect, but they'll be good enough to work because I know they work at a smaller size. I know they'll work uh, when I blow it up. So here we go. I'm doing some very simplified anatomy. Uh, you can see like the the pectoral and shoulder kind of muscles uh, just coming over and the bicep uh, being into that. And these are just kind of a very simplified yet looking proper anatomy tricks that you can do if you're drawing a lot of characters and stuff and you kind of get used to just like finding uh, what works in terms of simplifying stuff uh, so you can see I was just kind of filling in the lower torso and stuff but I figured it's not that important since uh, that's going to be hidden under the clothing and stuff so it's not too important to get every detail uh, but here you can see I'm messing with some different hand poses because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the arms I don't just want to do something basic where they're just flat because that's very lifeless So I want to have some personality in the arms and but I don't know what I was going for with this pose I think I was just being random The one arm looks like it's about to do a ninja chop and the other one's pointing to his belly button I, I, I honestly don't remember what that was supposed to be um, But yeah, I think I would yeah, I looked at them for a little bit and was like, okay, those don't make sense. So I just erased them out and you can see how easy it is to just kind of bend things at the elbow and place the arms and hands in different positions really quickly and easily, uh, which is obviously one of the great things about working digitally is just how easy it is to mix things up like that. So here we go. I have a base kind of anatomy pose and now I'm just going to start filling out the character design. Um, I decided to keep some of the crab leg stuff, um, kind of a mixture of the one, number one, and number four. Uh, but the purpose of the crab legs is going to be holding on the shell that was in number uh, five. So I kind of have a combination of every single uh, different design I did, which is kind of probably a bad way to come about a finished design because it might just become too busy and you always want to make sure you're just kind of focused on some basic core design elements. Uh, but just for fun, you know, I will kind of run with this and make it all crazy and have a bunch of different elements going on. So you can see there's like a knee pad with some barnacles on it and like a seaweed wrap around the leg. And then there's like a seaweed type skirt or tattered seaweed type skirt. And then on the other leg, there's like a shin guard and it also has barnacles on it and stuff like that. And then on his hand, he's got some kind of, um, it was supposed to be like the harpoon shooting weapon thing. Uh, but looking at that one right there, it just kind of looks like uh, like that little flying thing that you get in Legend of Zelda, uh, the one for the Wii. Um, but yeah, it's it just kind of doesn't read as a weapon right here. And I 
didn't really think about it too much at the time, but you can see I'm just kind of messing more with this design. And I put the the quiver for the um, harpoon uh, thingies <laughs> coming out of the shell, or just kind of tying them together. So everything's kind of tied together um, in different ways. And I messed around with the face a bit. Uh, you can see my method for drawing the face is kind of simple, um, but I kind of messed it up a few times. Uh, but basically just working on a very simplified version of like eyes, lines for eyes, lines for eyebrows, and then like a couple dots here for the nose and like a couple of the side lines for the mouth. And uh, you want to keep it as simple as you can because that just makes it a whole lot easier. And then when you actually render stuff, that's where you can get real detailed. Uh, but yeah, I looked at the pose. For, I took a step back. There was a slight pause there. Um, obviously, you can't see it in video form, but I paused the video and I went and got a drink and stuff, which is always a good idea uh, to take a break and step back, do something else, and then come back and look what you've done. Because uh, I noticed it was very heavy on the right side of the character with the knee pad and the weapon and everything. Uh, it just felt like it was kind of off balance design wise. So you want to make sure your design has. Uh, some sort of balance. Um, so I got some stuff on the right side. So I want to throw the weapon thing on the left hand side. And this will also give me a chance to redesign it to make it look more like some kind of crossbow. I'm just going to call it the crab crossbow, the crabby bow. I don't know what, what to call it exactly, but it's basically shooting little harpoons out of like some kind of crab shelled crossbow that kind of has some vertical element to it and stuff like that uh, so it's kind of a fun design and I think it would work um, yeah I always read people's comments um, I love reading your comments on like the those initial part one videos because there's always a bunch of interesting stuff and I try to incorporate as much stuff as I can uh, but people talked about how this would be the best weapon the most practical weapon and stuff like that and I, I can agree that some kind of like crossbow that shoots harpoons or something, you know, that would be good. It could work underwater or above water and stuff like that. Uh, so there you can see I got rid of the emo side swept hairdo and had it go slicked back into something more, I don't know, more warrior-esque or just less, uh, more practical is the right word. Because uh, while having hair in front of your face is, I don't know, it could be cool or stylish and probably isn't a very realistic idea. It isn't very warrior-esque, so you want to make sure everything kind of fits your concept that you're going for. Uh, so the hair is slicked back here, but I still kept some of the spikiness and uh, the style the style that you would come to want. Um, I still left that on the back of the head. Uh, so I think we are about done with the line art portion of this. You can see me reworking this uh, my little crabby crossbow. And I think that's about it. So I just take a quick breather here. Um, yeah, I took another quick break. Uh, I walked away from the video and then I came back. And once again, that just kind of lets me refocus on things and see what I want to change and if there's anything that I need to adjust and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, you can see I'm jumping right into the painting, and this is going to be very similar to how I did it in the Painting Faces video. Uh, you can see I'm working kind of at a very small size, and I don't want to zoom in too much because I don't want to get too hung up on all the details of the face. Obviously, you could spend a long time rendering a face, but I wanted to stay zoomed out just so I could focus on doing it in a few brush strokes, trying to keep it as minimal as possible. Uh, Cause that's, I don't want the focus to be just on the guy's face and that'll kind of make it everything else look less rendered and uh, be, it would be pretty off putting, I think. So let's see, I worked below the line art for a bit, just like the painting faces video. And then I came back above the line art to fill in the eyes and stuff like that. Get rid of the black line art and put in some, this kind of painterly, painterly eyes and eyebrows and I think that worked out okay um, sometimes it's hard to like do these like torsos and stuff where there's a lot of skin um, 
At least I think so, just because there's so much skin to cover and you want the same level of detail and stuff that you get in the face. Uh, you don't just want it to be a flat color. So it's kind of, it, it can be difficult to get that level of detail um, on like a torso where it's just, you know, basic flat shapes. Um, so I struggled with that in the past. Uh, but I think this one turned out all right. Um, see here, I'm just kind of zooming back, checking things, trying to add some type of abs or something. Uh, but um, yeah, I decided to move on to the crab legs. And I looked at a quick reference uh, between the videos, uh, the part one and the part two. And I think I figured out how to draw crab legs, at least slightly. There's a lot of red on them um, in the mid parts, especially. But then near the joints, there's a lot of kind of whiteness. It gets white. And on the underside, it can get white. And there's also a lot of spikes on them, like little uh, nubs and things like that. Uh, so it's it's always good to go on Google Image Search or whatever, and just to remind yourself what something looks like, even if you know uh, what you think you know what something looks like. Like I thought I knew what a crab leg would look like, uh, but it, when you actually have to sit down and start like rendering one, that's where you realize, oh, maybe I don't know it as as well as I thought I did. So I got to look at some references. Uh, so you can see they just got like little white nubs. I'm showing the little raised parts with little speculars of white. And I think that reads, it looks kind of spiny and uncomfortable actually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that worked out all right. Um, I was also getting worried, I think around that time that um, I would have too many different colors going on, especially with something bright and red, like those crab legs and stuff in the shell in the background. I knew that wouldn't be red. Uh, so I started to get concerned about that uh, because you don't want too many materials going on at once in a design. Uh, you want to try to keep your color palettes, you know, somewhat cohesive. You don't just want like bright color this and bright color that. You want to kind of make things mix and match. Uh, so you're tying in different colors uh, that are on the legs, maybe with something that's on the torso and stuff like that, um, just to kind of keep it looking like makes sense uh, but here we go i'm doing the seaweed i guess it can be some kind of seaweed wrap skirt thing the warrior thing i don't know what to call it exactly uh, you can see me checking my values in black and white i wasted a lot of time kind of messing with this seaweed stuff because i was trying to figure out if i can make it look slimy um like kind of really wet and seaweedy or if i should just make it look kind of very matte finished and dry uh, but you can see me messing with speculars right here, and I didn't quite know how to pull that off, so I eventually went back and just canceled that idea. Uh, but if you want to make something look wet and slimy, the best way to do that is to just add a bunch of very bright speculars. And speculars are just individual, or speculars, I should say, are just places that catch um, light in the fullest amount. And it's usually in little dots, like little dots of the highest amount of light. So you see that a lot on wet surfaces because uh, water becomes very reflective. So you get these little like speculars, little tiny dots of white along something. So that's a good way to make things look uh, wet and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, back to the legs and stuff, back to the skin tones. So many skin tones going on here. Uh, I should have given this guy more clothes so I didn't have to deal with so many skin tones. <laughs> but regardless, um, I think it worked out okay. I didn't struggle too much with the skin tones. Uh, so you can see me moving on to the hair now. And I wanted to just give him some dark hair. Uh, just because there's a lot of brown and uh, dark stuff going on. So I figured that would be a good... Uh, color that would go that would complement the rest of the stuff since there's going to be some brown here and there brown belts and things you can see there's like little brown wraps around his legs and arms with like shark teeth or some kind of fish teeth on them uh, so I think dark color worked nice for the hair and you can see I don't put any bright highlights in the hair or anything like that just kind of keep it really simple uh, but you can see there's like my little crabby crossbow. I made it red. 
I also gave him some kind of like shellfish arm guard on that side. Um, which is darker red, but I still need to keep everything kind of looking cohesive. So I, I tried to tie those colors in with the crab legs that are wrapped around his uh, chest, um, just to kind of keep the colors simple. You can see me messing around here. And I think at this point, I had actually drawn for a really long time. So I think the video was almost two hours uh, because of the drawing and the painting. Um, and just all these processes, and I usually don't waste that much time on a on a simple character painting. I don't think I've wasted that much time on any of the other videos I've done. Uh, so time was running short, so I think I wrapped it up about here, and it's not fully finished, and I think I'll go finish it and um, add it to some kind of profile, DeviantArt or whatever, so you can see it. Uh, but you can see, for the purposes of the video, I'm just gonna finish it here. And there's my Ocean Warrior, and I hope you enjoy it. And if I go back, I kind of started messing with it here. But if I go back, I'm probably going to add some tattoos and craziness. Uh, I was just doing these on an overlay layer, um, using a different layer and just kind of doing an overlay to add some kind of fun noodling uh, tattoos, really tribal random stuff. Um, and I, I didn't keep these ones, but, you know, it's just kind of proof of concept. I wanted to mess around with it. Oh, uh, okay, but thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and feel free to recommend ideas for future videos.